Hi everyone, this is Hel Tasaki. In this short video, I'd like to discuss the main results of our recent paper uh, entitled Griffith's Type Inequalities for Short-Range Spin Glass Models. This is a joint work with my two friends, Chigaku Itoi and Hisamitsu Mukaida. You, you see that Chigaku is in a gorgeous place. And actually, uh, I've known them for many, many years now, like since before some of you were even born. But this is the first time that we, the three of us collaborate. And I'm very happy about that. But anyway, let's get started with the introduction. And let me go back to the basics. The ferromagnetic easing model on the standard L by L hypercubic lattice with the nearest neighbor interaction. And you know that this model exhibits ferromagnetic order at low temperatures, provided that you are in dimensions two or higher. And the question is, how do you characterize this ferromagnetic order? Okay, One standard way is to define the long range order parameter like this uh, by summing up the correlation function at zero magnetic field. And if this is non-zero, it means that this correlation function does not decay. The other very famous characterization is in terms of spontaneous magnetization uh, defined in terms of the derivative of the free energy. Uh, this is the specific free energy in the infinite volume limit of the system with a uniform magnetic field H. Okay? And if this is non-zero, then this means that this free energy is not differentiable at H equals zero. More physically, this means uh, mu sm greater than zero means that infinitesimally small magnetic field can trigger non-zero magnetization, and this is one form of spontaneous symmetry breaking. And then the celebrated uh, Griffith's theorem proved back in 1966 says, oh, by the way, this is Professor Robert Griffiths, and it said that these two order parameters are related by this inequality. This means that if mu long range order is positive, then this mu sm should also be, must also be positive. So uh, in, in, in short, it means this theorem states that this characterization always imply this characterization. Okay. Now, uh, as for this Ising model, I think now the equality corresponding to this inequality is known. It's difficult, but it's known. But anyway, this is a celebrated uh, pioneering work, which was very important. And also this inequality has been uh, extended to many, many systems, including quantum systems. Okay. And today we are going to discuss its extension to spin glass models. So this is briefly what we're going to do. We're going to study three different characterization of spin glass order. And the number one is in terms of the broadening of the overlap distribution, we define this order parameter. And the second is in terms of non-differentiability of the two replica free energy, and we define this order parameter. And actually this order parameter Q jump is identical to the very famous order parameter called the Edwards Anderson order parameter if you don't have a magnetic field. And the third characterization is in terms of the literal breakdown of replica symmetry. And we are going to prove that this characterization implies this, and this characterization implies this characterization. Okay, so let's be more specific. Uh, we're going to discuss definitions and main results. <clears throat> okay, so we are interested in the Edward Anderson model with a magnetic field. <clears throat> So uh, this lambda L denotes the standard D-dimensional L by L hypercubic lattice. And in this video, we mainly consider periodic boundary conditions. In the paper, we consider several different boundary conditions. And by sigma X, I denote the spin variable on site X, which takes value plus minus one. And by this bold phase sigma, I denote the collection of all spin variables. So this is called a spin configuration, and this is a standard Hamiltonian. Here you have sum over all nearest neighbor pairs, and this is sum over all x. So this jxy is interaction, and we assume that it's random. So it's uh, independent and identically distributed random variable. And hx uh, may be random or non-random, but in random case, we again assume that this magnetic field is iid. 
And we are, of course, interested in the equilibrium state uh, corresponding to this Hamiltonian at inverse temperature beta in the infinite volume limit, the thermodynamic limit, okay? And in case of the standard Edwards-Anderson model in which we don't have any, we don't have this magnetic field term, uh, then pe here people believe that there is a, the model exhibits a spinless phase uh, for, at sufficiently low temperature with, with in, for certain J, okay? Uh, but mathematically, there is no proof. And also physically, uh, the nature of this spinless phase is still very much controversial. And if you have a magnetic field, then uh, it is even controversial whether you have a phase transition, uh, spinless phase in dimension three or not. I think people agree that uh, there is a spinless phase in very high dimension. But anyway, in this work, we do not discuss the existence or the nature of the spinless phase. Well, of course, I admit that this is a very important and exciting and interesting topic, but we do not discuss that. We do not go into this deep question and we study the relations between different characterization of spinless order. Yeah. Okay, so the first characterization that we discuss is, the rep is in terms of the replica overlap. And uh, for this purpose, we consider this expectation value for two independent replicas. We consider two independent spin configurations and consider this probability measure, but this is simply the product of two uh, equilibrium distribution, probability distributions. And this is a standard observable known as replica overlap. This is basically the inner product of these two spin configuration divided by the number of sites. So this R tells you how close these two spin configurations are. And it's usual, it's standard to uh, introduce the replica overlap distribution, PQ, uh, which is basically the probability density that this R is equal to Q in the ensemble where you first take the thermal expectation value with, uh, by using this measure, and then finally take the random average, the average over random J and H, okay? And it is known that by looking at this uh, overlap distribution, you, you see the nature of the phase. And if there is no order, you simply have this single peak. And if there's some order, you will see like double peak or some more complicated structure. In any case, in here you have the broadening of this overlap distribution. And we want to characterize this broadening in terms of this broadening order parameter, which is nothing but the standard deviation corresponding to this probability distribution. Or in terms of this R and the expectation value, you can we can write it explicitly like this. Of course, this is the standard deviation. Okay. So uh this case cor corresponding to Q broadening zero, and these cases corresponding to positive Q broadening. The second characterization is in terms of non-differentiability of the two replica free energy, or we define something called the jump order operator, jump order parameter. And for this purpose, we introduce uh, two replicas with explicit rather artificial coupling lambda. And the Hamiltonian is not only the sum of these two parts, but uh, con contains this part, which explicitly, coup explicitly couples the two replicas. And of course, uh, I would say that in physical situation, lambda should be zero. But in order to probe the phase, we introduce this uh, explicit coupling. And the corresponding free energy is defined like this. And then we argue that if the system uh, exhibits some non-trivial order, then this free energy F2 should exhibit some singularity at lambda equals zero, the physical point. And mathematically, this lambda plays the same role as the magnetic field in the ferromagnetic easing model. But, but for the ferromagnetic easing model H, uniform magnetic field is a physical parameter. But in this case, lambda is not a, not a physical parameter. Okay, but anyway, so we expect singularity, for example, like this. To measure this singularity, uh, we introduce this other parameter that we call Q jump. Actually, this was introduced by von Enter and Griffiths. And so this is literally the jump in the derivative of this S, F, or this is a bit sloppy notation, but uh, it can be written as, an, as a difference of our uh, expectation value of R when lambda is uh, positive or N negative, okay? And it's clear from the definition that uh, if Q, Q jump, 
being positive is equivalent that, to the, the fact that F2 is non-differentiable at lambda equals zero. Okay. And this is a remark. Uh, so we are we are discussing the general case, but if we restrict ourselves to the uh, standard that was under some model without a magnetic field, then this Q jump reduces to the standard very well known order parameter called the Edwards Anderson order parameter, uh, which is again in a sloppy notation written like this. Okay. <clears throat> now we can discuss our theorems. The first theorem is about the standard Edwards Anderson model without a magnetic field. In this case, we prove this inequality, which is actually a very straightforward extension of Griffith's theorem. And as I said, this is equal to Q jump. Uh, in general case, with a magnetic field, we prove this uh, a bit weaker inequality. But anyway, in the uh, both of them says that when Q break Q broadening is non-zero, is positive, strictly positive, then Q QEA or Q jump must be positive in both cases. So we have shown that the broadening of the overlap distribution implies non-differentiability of the two replica free energy. If you have broadening, if you have Q broadening positive, then you see that Q jump should be positive and there is singularity here. So uh, you, know, you see that this is a sort of statistical mechanical characterization of spinless order. And here we have more thermodynamic characterization. So they are related in this way. And we 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 uh, we want to note that this these theorems can be proved very easily for any classical spin glass model with short range interaction and bounded spins. It's quite universal. Uh, we are we, we still cannot extend this to quantum systems, but for classical systems, uh, it's rather universal. And let me say one word about uh slightly more than one word, but the idea of this proof, it's it's very easy. So, but for, for notational simplicity, let, let me consider only the standard that was under some model without a magnetic field. And the Q broadening uh, becomes this, and the second term vanishes because of the symmetry. And in terms of the usual correlation function, it, it's written like this. So this is just a standard correlation function for a single system, okay? And now uh, we want to look at this summation. Here we have double sum over all, over the whole lattice, and so suppose that this is a part. This is a small part of the whole lattice, and we pick these two boxes S one S two, and consider the part partial summation in which we sum of some x of sum over x in S one and sum over y in S two, and th this. Uh, curve doesn't mean anything, but but it's it shows that we are looking at the correlation between x and y. Okay, now we consider something slightly different. We take the same geometry, same x and y, but <clears throat> we sort of freeze the spins on the boundary of S one, and also freeze the spins on the boundary of S two. By freezing these spins, we are we are working on short range spinless models, so uh, that this uh, this part will won't interact anymore with outside world. So we have a small spin system, uh, independent spin system on S1 and also on S2. And now, uh, now X and Y do not interact. So that X interacts with say these boundary spins. Okay, and this is a so we have some boundary condition, some boundary condition. We we get this by freezing the spin set boundary. And now we we we, we consider something here. Uh, now you look at this summation under some boundary condition, then you try to vary these boundary condition to maximize this summation, okay? And also you do the same thing for this summation too. And since uh, we are not, we, we're working on random system, uh, there's no translation invariance. So this max, maximum is attained by different boundary conditions. So you, you have to really carefully choose that. And, but, and, and I claim, that uh, we have inequality here. But this is kind of trivial. So, you know, we are looking at this correlation function, but you have frozen the spins on the boundary so that to, make, to, to maximize these summations. And of course you get this upper bound. So this is such a trivial uh, upper bound. And I, in fact, uh, <clears throat> I used this quite a long time ago, probably uh, many of you were not born. Uh, <clears throat> I used this long time ago to discuss critical phenomena in spin glass models. Okay, so now I want to look at this kind of summation and I would like to recall that the 
that the mathematically that a mathematically rigorous uh, proof definition of Edwards Anderson order parameter given by Van Enter and Griffiths is written like this. So it's actually here you have exactly the same thing. Like here, you have boundary condition and this maximization. And you finally take this random average, divide by the number of sites uh, in this small lattice and go to uh, L infinity limits. And Van Enter and Griffiths also proves that this is equal to this thermodynamic definition of Edwards Anderson order parameter. Now uh, you see that, okay, so here you have this and you want to take, uh, okay, so you have many, many summation, but you can then sum over S1 and S2 to get, basically get this with small error. And you take a random average over everything. And then on the right-hand side, you get this thing squared, but you have square root. So uh, this proves that this Q broadening is upper bounded by Q Edwards Anderson order parameter. Uh, so that was a brief description of the proof of this thing. And this can be, this is a slightly more, this is a bit more tricky, but you can prove this too. Okay, so that was our first theorem, the first and the second theorem. To discuss our third theorem, I will discuss the third uh, characterization of spinless order in terms of the three replica free energy and the literal replica symmetry breaking order parameter QRSP. Now we consider a, the system of three replicas, and again, with explicit couplings, lambda and lambda prime, okay? Something similar was considered by Guerra. And uh, here is our Hamiltonian. So we again have these independent parts and explicit couplings between different replicas. And here, lambda couples replica one and two, lambda, lambda prime couples replica one and three. And this is a corresponding free energy. Okay, now uh, you consider a special, com special uh, case where lam lambda prime is minus lambda. And then by considering the uh, permutation symmetry of three replicas, you can easily find that this, uh, this thing, no, no, this thing, oops, this thing, F3 beta lambda minus lambda is an even function of lambda, okay? So uh, if nothing wrong happens, then if you differentiate this and put lambda to zero, then you get zero because this is an even function, okay? But uh, so if this is non-zero, then it's a sign that something strange is happening. And in this case, uh, this derivative is, you know, this is again sloppy notation, but this is derivative is basically equal to the difference between the overlap between one and two and, one and three. Oh, okay, this is a picture for th this limit, okay? So one and two are coupled by lambda and one and three are coupled by minus lambda, but we make lambda very, very small, infinitesimally so small. So we, here we have infinitesimally small positive coupling. Here we have infinitesimally small negative coupling. And in this situation, we ask if there, if these two guys, if these two, the two expectation values of the overlap are different. Now, here is our third theorem, and it says that this jump order operator, order parameter is related to this uh, literal RSB, literal, literal re replica symmetry breaking order parameter uh, in this way, okay? So again, this said that whenever Q jump is positive, Q RSB must be positive non-differentiability of the two replica free energy like this uh, implies literal replica symmetry breaking like this. These guys are similar and these guys are not similar. I think this is interesting. And I also say that this, this theorem is proved very easily by only using uh, concavity of free energy and concavity of free energies. And uh, it also applies to many, many other models including long range models, okay. So uh, actually this Q jump greater than zero, this positive, positivity of Q jump has been proved in long range spin glass models like SK model or the random energy model. So in this case, uh, theorem three establishes that these models exhibit literal replica symmetry breaking like this or in, in the sense of like this. And uh, this was, I think, this was actually discussed for the random energy model by Guerrero already 
but we 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 can cover uh, SK model too with this theorem. Okay, so uh, I have explained the main results. So let me go to discussion, and I will make a remark about the limitation of our theory. So we established relations between the different characterization of spin less order. Okay, we started from this standard characterization in terms of the broadening of the overlap distribution, and we have shown that this uh, leads to this thermodynamic uh, characterization in terms of this jump in the derivative of F2. And we have seen that this implies this interesting characterization in terms of the literal replica symmetry breaking. But we have to note that none of these conditions have been proved rigorously for short range spin glass models. Of course, this is a very difficult problem. In that sense, uh, this arrow is only for short range models. So you might say that this, these, this arrow in theorems one and two are empty theorems. Well, but I hope it's interesting. They are interesting. And the other remark, the other important remark is that these conditions do not necessarily imply that the model has spin glass order. For example, in the ferromagnetic, ferromagnetic easing model in which everything is understood, uh, if you have positive spontaneous magnetization, then this implies that this Q broadening is positive, Q jump is positive, and Q RSB is positive. So nothing, there's nothing spin glass here, but you have this. And so what's going on? Well, in this case, uh, if you have a, ferromagnetic easing model at low temperature, and if you have consider this three replica system, and the equilibrium state looks like this. It's a it's an equal mixture of these two states. And here, most of the spins here and here are pointing upward, and here it's pointing downward. And this is just the opposite. Okay. So this in this case we have, of course, we have literal replica symmetry breaking, but it simply reflects the spontaneous breakdown of the up-down symmetry in the original easing method. So this is an important remark. So these characterization uh, becomes meaningful if you uh, if this is zero. But this implies that our theory is uh, probably most interesting when applied to short-range spinless models under magnetic field. And these models do not have simple Z2 symmetry. So they do not exhibit a uh, simple spin, uh, standard simple uh, spontaneous symmetry break. So uh, this is what we expect in this kind of system when it has a spin less order. So if you consider a single spin system, uh, it somehow exhibits some spin less order. Okay. And if you consider two replica system, then you can characterize this spin less order in terms of the broadening of the overlap distribution or the jump, okay, discontinuity in the derivative of the two replica free energy. But I stress that in this case, uh, there's no spontaneous symmetry breaking in the standard sense in quantum mechanics. Of course, you might say that there is replica symmetry breaking, but you only see it through the replica calculation. And from the naive or standard uh, formulation of st uh, statistical, statistical mechanics, you don't see any spontaneous symmetry breaking here. But in the same model, we have established that uh, it exhibits manifest spontaneous symmetry breaking of the permutation symmetry of three replicas. So I think this is this implication is rather interesting. Uh, one remark is that uh, it may be that there is no spin glass order in this kind of model in three dimensions. Uh, this is suggested by recent uh, numerical simulation here. Uh, this may be a bit disappointing, but I will remark on this in the final summary. Okay, so <clears throat> here is here is our here's summary. So uh, we proved inequalities for general short range spin glass models that clarify the relations between different characterization of spin glass order. Uh, we in particular proved that this positivity of broadening order parameter implies positivity of the jump order parameter, and the positivity of the jump order parameter implies the positivity of this uh, literal replica symmetry breaking order parameter. Okay. And the theory has an interesting implication in a model with a magnetic field. So such a model does not exhibit a symmetry breaking by itself in the usual sense, but may exhibit spontaneous breakdown of replica permutation symmetry in the three replica system. Okay. 
And the final remark is that our, our inequality may be used to prove the absence of spin loss order in some short range models. For example, for example, if you have a concrete spin loss model of in like three dimensions, and if you could prove that Q jump is zero, I don't know how difficult it is, but then it implies that Q broadening is zero. And especially I didn't talk about the boundary condition, but if you could prove that Q jump is zero, and this Q jump does not depend on boundary condition, and then it implies that Q broadening is zero for any boundary condition. So I think that is rather meaningful. Okay, so that's all what I wanted to say. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.